Welcome to PV Magazine Live. This is Christian Rosland, America's editor at PV Magazine, and we're here at the Solar Power International 2016 trade show in Las Vegas. I'm joined by Vikram Agarwal, the CEO of Energy Sage. Vikram, thanks for taking a moment to talk with us. Thank you, Christian, for having me here. I'm very excited to be at SPI 2016. Absolutely. So Energy Sage, for those of you who are not familiar with it, is an online marketplace for solar. Think about the way that you buy plane tickets on Kayak or the way that you go to Hotels.com to get a hotel room. In the same way, it's an apples to apples comparison of products, uh, solar products in this case. Anyway, Vikram, so tell me a little bit about why uh, this, particular, this particular business model, why an online marketplace is so appropriate for solar right now. Yeah, it's a great time to be in the solar industry today. Consumer interest and awareness in solar has never been higher. And what we are seeing is that consumers are starting to behave like shoppers. Uh, think about you and I. We like to do our homework. We like to understand what our choices are, what our options are, and what are the right prices for those options. Solar is no different. Just like every other consumer product, it is now time for solar to move into the 21st century and use online marketplaces to help consumers research and shop for solar. Absolutely. So, Energy Sage just recently released, I believe, your third solar marketplace intelligence report, looking at the first half of 2016 and giving some data across all of the bids that were put forward. Based upon what you've seen, what do you see as the big trends right now in distributed solar? Yeah, the biggest trends for us is, first of all, as I mentioned, the consumer interest has never been higher. We are seeing a continued growth in traffic. Our traffic has doubled in the last six months. Uh, what, what that tells us is more and more consumers are interested in solar. They're reading a lot about content on our platform, and they are looking for solar quotes. A uh, lot of consumers, when they're coming to our platform, about 30% of them tell us they already have a quote in hand. And then they want to make sure that they, uh, is this a good deal or not? Is this the right equipment package, right financing package, or the right installer? And should they go with them, or should they look around and compare their other options? So one thing, as I mentioned, good trend in terms of consumer interest. Second, we saw that prices are continuing to decline. Uh, prices declined roughly 3.5% over the second half of 2015, so that's a good sign for the consumers. Uh, consumers, it's becoming even a better uh, uh, value proposition, a financial value proposition for consumers to go solar, so we are seeing that. Uh, consumer interest in owning the systems continues to increase. Over the last 18 months to 24 months, we continue to see more and more consumers are interested in owning their system, whether paying cash for them or using loans to finance. I believe this half uh, of the year, almost 96% of our consumers ended up choosing to own the system versus third-party uh, leasing or PPA options. Right, which is very different from the national trend where we only have, I believe, 45% of uh, homeowners are, are going with loans and direct purchases versus the third-party arrangements. So to get into another aspect of this report, uh, you know, obviously solar looks very different in California than it does in New England. I noticed that this year, for the first time, you had state-level data. So you were looking at the results from California, the results from Massachusetts, the results from North Carolina, you know, various other, Utah, I think, was in there, and Texas. Tell me, how does, uh, how does distributed solar on your, as sold through your platform, how does it look different in New England compared to California? Specific, well, I should say Massachusetts and New York compared to California. Yeah, there are two key differences that we see. One is the, uh, among the consumers. The consumers in California are very used to solar. I think if you, uh, when a consumer signs up on our platform and we zoom out their property, you see solar uh, installed on a number of their neighbor's roofs. So these consumers are very, very comfortable with the idea of solar. And now they are essentially trying to decide. They're not trying to decide whether they're trying to go solar or not, but they're trying to decide which solar installation company and what equipment and what financing they are looking to choose. Versus if you look at Massachusetts and New York, while the penetration of solar is getting better day by day, it is still not at the level of California. So the consumers still need that two-step uh, decision. One is to actually, are they going to go solar? Are the economics actually going to work for them? And then secondly, which installer, what equipment package, what financing they should choose. So that's number one. The second, sim similarly on the installer front, what we see is installers in California are very used to competition. Uh, typically, we see installers in California are 
uh, they know that consumers are going to get three, four, five, six quotes, and they're very, very much willing to be uh, uh, competitive with their with their other uh, providers. While in Massachusetts, uh, the 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 number of installers is not that uh, that high as California, and the competition is also not as strong. So, and that's reflective in the prices that we see. Uh, Massachusetts prices and New York prices are higher than that of California, uh, and the price dispersion is higher. So, uh, on average, uh, if you get quotes from three to four different solar installation companies, your price variation could be several thousand dollars for an average homeowner. Interesting. So another thing that caught me about this report was the, again, 96% of your customers are doing loans or direct purchases. I noticed that your uh, your installers are using a wider range of lenders, that the lender landscape is really fragmented and that there are a lot of loan products available with some fairly long terms. Can you talk about the dynamics that you're seeing in the in the lending space? Absolutely. Uh, similar um, to other, other parts of the equation, there are two kinds of primarily kind of loans that are available in the marketplace today. One is the set of loans that are offered through the installers only. These are the companies like SunGage, Dividend, Mosaic, etc. And then there are lenders that are offering loans directly to the consumer without going through the solar installation providers. So what we're seeing is um, there is, it looks like there is almost, um, there are about a dozen or so companies that are providing loans through installers. But the second set, which is lenders that are going directly to consumers, that number is increasing very, very rapidly. These are local banks, credit unions, specialized lenders, PACE, et cetera. That number, we are seeing a tremendous increase in those numbers. And both of these, comp both of these sets of lenders one thing that we are very excited about is the choice for consumer is increasing. They're offering different terms, different interest rates, different origination costs, closing costs. Uh, what that does is consumers now have a choice. They can go with a three-year loan or a 20-year loan. They can go with equipment secured or property secured, uh, tax deductible and not tax deductible, which is great news if you're a solar consumer today. Shop around. You, I bet you you can find a product that will meet your need, a lot of flexibility, a lot of options and great financial results for the consumer. Great. Thank you so much for taking the time to talk with me, Vikram. My pleasure. Thank you, Christian. And this is PV Magazine Live, and we're here at the Solar Power International Trade Show in Las Vegas.